Hi everyone, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. For today's video, we're gonna work on the Mac 512K, the machine with the Hyperdrive 10 meg MFM hard drive. This will be part two and the final part to the Mac 512K series. So first I wanna focus on the power supply. If you remember from part one, the power supply that was included with the hyperdrive was bad. I ended up having another power supply in stock that actually mounted on this board, but the problem is that switching power supply took probably about a second to power up. And what would happen is when you powered on the Mac, the motherboard would start up, but the add-on board wouldn't get power. And then the power supply would come kick in and that would cause the computer to kind of glitch out and go crazy at first and you hit the reset button and then everything would work fine. Now looking at this, you might think, oh, the capacitors were bad. Adrian must have switched all the capacitors. Well, no, that's not actually the problem. I didn't change any of these capacitors. This is a normal switch mode power supply, so I won't get into how they operate, but just very simply, they take high voltage, they convert it into high voltage DC, they run it through something that chops it at high frequency and runs it through this transformer, and then that's converted to DC voltage that creates the power rail. This heatsink here has the transistor which switches on and off very quickly and is fed into the transformer and there is something that drives that and in this case it's this little transistor down here. So I started thinking that maybe that was the problem because this entire power supply wasn't even running at all when you turned it on. Well it turned out that this transistor was actually fine and it was a metal can transistor and I've actually swapped it out and I never put the original back but that was not the problem. The problem was one of these resistors here that's basically the bootstrap resistor and it lets a little bit of current flow through the high voltage and drive that transistor circuit. Well, this resistor here is one that I've replaced. I salvaged it off an old TV and that had gone open. With that resistor replaced, this power supply is now working absolutely perfectly. So with that, I'm actually ready to reassemble this back into the Mac. I've also serviced the disk drive on this thing, so it's ready to go, and this thing can be put back together. But before I do that, I wanna try something. First thing I wanna do is image this hard drive. If this drive dies, I'd like to have a working system bootable image for this machine I can maybe write onto another drive. Let's image this drive. Well, I'm imaging the hard drive from the Mac 512, and man, was this a bit of a pain in the butt. So first of all, the drive is an MMI 112. This is a defunct drive company that probably only existed for a couple years. So there's basically no information to find on this thing. But amazingly, I actually found a document that lists the heads and cylinders, as that's essentially the only way I could even know how to first get this working. But to image it, I had to hook it up to a PC. So here's a 386. Has to be one that's old enough that can support MFM hard drives. I happen to have a 16-bit MFM controller, which is in here. Now, unfortunately, one of the issues is, is there's a controller sitting here. This is the IDE controller that I normally have in this machine. You can't have both of these in the computer at the same time. They use the same IRQ. There might be some IDE controllers that support not using the same IRQ, but basically they're on both IRQ 14. And both of these assume the role of drives 80 and 81 in the BIOS. So they can't be in there together. So that leads to a problem. How am I going to image a hard drive when I have no other hard drive in the computer? Here it is right here. Parallel port zip drive. This is a zip 250, which I happen to have that actually works, but normally the parallel port is on the multi-IO card. And here's the multi-IO card with the parallel port. Well, that's not in the computer. So I had to go into my spare parts bin and I actually had to find a serial parallel card. So next thing was, uh, now that I had the heads and cylinders, I loaded up the program Partition Recovery, I think it's called. And you see it's actually creating the image right now. It's copied seven megabytes so far. Using the correct type one for this drive, which I think is 306 cylinders, four heads, 17 sectors, every seven sectors while this was copying would error out. So I'm not sure what that means other than I think this drive was formatted as 306 cylinders, four heads, and 16 sectors. Well, I went back into the BIOS and created a custom type and I changed it from 17 to 16 sectors per track. And now it's copying the drive. Now I have no idea if this is gonna make a working drive image. At least it's working without erroring out. Let's take a look at some of those sectors. So this is that partition recovery tool made by Active. This is their little freeware demo version. So 80H is the C drive. 
Here's what I was saying in the BIOS. It's set for four heads, 305 cylinders, and 16 sectors per track. Well, according to the documentation I found for the drive, it's 17 sectors per track, which incidentally matches pretty much every single MFM hard drive ever made. So not sure what's going on here, but if I look at ADH, of course it has no drive partition because it's a Mac partition. If I push Control S, then we should be able to look at the, at the sectors directly. Okay, so we're on sector zero. I push page down for sector one, two. Okay, so sector three. So here's what I was saying. It says system, finder, Mac, whatever, disassembler, startup screen, finder, clipboard file. So it's definitely reading the drive. And look, if I page down through these sectors, we're getting stuff. Okay, so what I haven't done is bench test this setup with the original power supply again. So let's do that. I have everything hooked up. The original power supply, the original hard drive, and the motherboard is out here on its side. I even have the power cable hooked up from the analog board. This is the mains input that goes to the supplementary power supply. And hopefully nothing explodes. So without a floppy drive hooked up, we are relying on the hard drive to boot up this computer. Let's see, here we go. Oh, that hard drive didn't make a very good sound. There we are. The machine booted right up, no glitching. So that power supply definitely starts up quick enough so there is no instability. I'm going to turn the computer off and on, or actually, yes, I'm going to power cycle it. And we're just going to make sure that it does boot. So I think that was all that was keeping this hard drive from working in the first place was that open resistor on that supplementary power supply. All right, so before I button this up, there's one more thing I want to try. I want to try getting it working with a different hard drive. Clearly this large Seagate is not going to fit inside this machine, but if I can make it work with this, then if this hard drive dies, I know I can successfully find another three and a half inch drive and mount that in here to use it. This one I happen to have handy. It's a 20 meg drive and it does work perfectly. So I just had a thought that this power supply may not be strong enough to run the Seagate ST225, but oh well, let's see what happens. I'm gonna turn it on. Well, the hard drive is immediately spinning, so that's a good sign. All right, so obviously we have a flashing question mark. I mean, this is formatted for DOS. So let's uh, hook a disk drive up. What a precarious setup. I have the floppy drive on its side here. Well, it's a different one. Mouse is connected, keyboards over here. We got mains voltage right there, <laughs> open power supplies. It's all super dangerous. So let's turn this on. Okay, everything seems to be working. I'm gonna boot this with system 3.2 finder 5.3. And on this disk, I have the files I copied off the hard drive, the Hyperdrive V3R2 tools. All right, so we have install V3R2. Let's uh, give that a try. This floppy drive here has had its eject gear replaced. So it sounds a little scratchy on the eject, if you notice that on the video. It's ejecting nicely. I have clean and lubricated the drive. Oh, this is annoying. Should have hooked up a second floppy drive. Error. When installing on a disk or drawer with a hierarchical file system or file structure, you must run hyper install from the same folder as the system file you wish to install upon. Hmm. Well, that doesn't sound useful. Let's try Banager. I cannot imagine using one of these machines with a single floppy drive. Oh my. Can you imagine that this was this was your life? Guess I'm giving my eject drive a workout. Ah. Oh. 
These errors are very nonsensical. Okay, we're trying a new approach. I looked online and I found the original disks for Hyperdrive, the system disk and the apps disk. I'll put a link in the description to those disks if you're looking for them yourself. But let's try booting this system disk, which I'll stick in this drive. And the app disk, I don't know if I need it, I'm gonna stick it in the second floppy drive there. And we're gonna turn it all on. All right, so we have a system here. There's the application disk just popped up and we have that manager program. It's the same one that I ran off my floppy disk, but it gave me the error that I couldn't run it unless I was running it on the hard drive. It's the same version, V3R2, but just for giggles, I'm gonna run it. Hyperdrive has not been initialized properly. The only function you make to is initialize. Hey, okay, that is different than we were getting with the other one. So let's click initialize. I heard the hard drive accessing. Please name the drawer. Okay, I'll just call it startup. Does this drawer, no password. Hierarchical file system or flat file system. So a little disturbing is that it didn't ask I cannot create drawer. Problem may require dealer service. Well, yeah, because you didn't even ask what kind of hard drive I'm using. This is a, a bigger hard drive than the other one. This is a 20 meg. So where do I set up the parameters? Drawer. Let's set preferences. Maybe I can on power up, mount all drawers, startup drawer, disk caching. Okay. Initialize disk. Warning. Okay, I don't have a password. Whoa. It wants the password? I'm not really seeing a function here to set the geometry of the drive, and it doesn't seem to do the initialization process correctly, probably because the drive is different. I didn't even get that error this time around. Delete drawer, no drawers. Create drawer, start up, new password, no password. Here we go, try that again. So the hard drive light was on while I was doing that, but then we error out. Well, it does seem to be doing something when it comes to looking at the cylinders because the original hard drive was the MMI M112. And according to this, it's a 10 meg hard drive and it's only got 306 cylinders, four heads. So I'm assuming it's actually able to do some type of figuring out of how many cylinders are on the drive. So that's interesting. Okay, I've been fiddling around and check it out. So this does see the hard drive as 20 megabytes. So that's neat. I am going to hit done and I'm gonna to try to initialize this disk again. I was reading the manual for the hyperdrive. I found it online. And I think the password is system password. System password. Let's see if that works. Oh yes, look at that. It doesn't even ask for like how big we want the drawer. Don't really get that. It's sort of trying to do it, but it's failing. Well, I've been fiddling around with this and I'm still not having any luck. So this screen here is where you type in system password and you can initialize the disk. But I've been reading the manual for this software and it says there's a format button that should be there, which is like a low level format. And it says if you're having problems with your disk to pick the format option. I've rebooted, I've tried a bunch of times. That option just does not show up on here. So it's only doing a quick initialize as opposed to a low level format. If you initialize the hard disk because you had problems with it and the problems continue, repeat these steps outlined above, but choose format instead of initialize. Well, I would do that if it let me, but it's not letting me. So I have a hunch that maybe this hard drive's not working because if you recall from the original drive, it was formatted with 16 sectors per cylinder, and this one's been low-level formatted as 17. So I have it hooked up to an old PC here, and this Seagate drive is a Type 2 with 17 sectors. All right, so I just entered it into the custom type, and I changed it to 16 sectors. We'll do a low-level with Superstore, see if this fixes it. There we go. Okay, the formatted hard drive is plugged back in the Mac. Turn this on. All right, and it's gonna tell us the drive's not properly initialized, which is, we know that. So we're gonna hit initialize. You heard the hard drive making noise. We're gonna configure a startup drawer, no password, hierarchical file system, and the same error. 
All right, so that's it. I'm gonna give up on trying to use the Seagate hard drive. And I think now it's just time to reassemble this computer as it was with the hyperdrive mod installed. So I am gonna do that now. Well, it's reassembly time. These are all the parts needed to put this Mac 512 back together with the hard drive. And I have the installation manual from General Computer. This was the original hyperdrive manual. Someone scanned it. Thank you very much, whoever you were. So let's get down to business. So first we have to mount the power supply to the disk drive and then that all goes inside the computer. If you remember there was a single screw at the front here and this holds the power supply on. Keep in mind this computer's been powered off for a few days so I'm not too worried about getting a shock. Next is the disk drive which I have to screw in from the bottom. And I'm going to stick down this little wire holder. Use this double-sided tape, so I'm using some 3N tape. Stick it right back where it was. The line filter here, if I recall, was screwed on here. The instructions are a little vague. don't quite remember, and uh, we'll just see if I can use this random screw I found. Seems a little sketchy, but if I recall, that's what they had done. Something like this. Next up, we're gonna connect the two drive interface cables to the motherboard. Okay, we gotta prepare for the motherboard. So we have to feed these through. You go through this triangular hole here. And the floppy cable, it's gonna go right there. And then we take the motherboard, which has these cables attached, and it says we feed it through that hole here. Okay, like that. And the motherboard power cable has to go through right there. Okay, so everything theoretically is good to go. Now we can't slide the motherboard on like we normally can. We're gonna have to connect this and connect to the power cable there. We're gonna connect power cable from the analog board. Like that. And we're gonna connect the floppy cable. Everything is connected. Does show in the manual here. Slide it on that side first. And then we have to kind of make sure that we gently pry it with a screwdriver on the other side. And it says you apply slight pressure on that part of the board. I've got it past the expansion card, now it's just the motherboard itself. Use gentle prying motion to ease the board into the brackets, then slide the logic board into its final position. Yeah, it's going to go down about a quarter of an inch once I get this in. Okay, almost got it. Oh, it actually went too far. Oh, wow, it's in. There it is. Sorry that was hard to see, but I just basically pried there. It, it kind of bent this and I levered against the circuit board and sort of pushed right there and it snapped in. Okay, so floppy is kind of, I think I'm going to have to undo this or I'm not sure the hard drive is going to go right here. Okay, so let's see, this is a little delicate. I definitely remember this was in this orientation. This doesn't quite match the instructions. Slight, slight differences here. All right, so I'm annoyed because I've been following the directions, but now I realize that there's one screw up here that holds this chassis in and two screws on the bottom and the motherboard is back in. So these instructions are wrong. On the instructions, it says this hard drive chassis mounts to this back lip of the computer here. Well, that's not the case. There are no screw holes in this and the bracket is screwed in on the bottom. So now I gotta take this all out again. Well, let's see if this pry method works for getting it out as well. Oh yes, it does. That's easy. I think I realized that the easiest thing for this is unplug the power connector from the analog board. That way I can leave this power cable connected to the motherboard. This thing's like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, floppy cable routed. We have exactly the right number of screws for this, so. Sorry, the AC just turned on. It's hot in Portland today, so it's cycling on and off. Now, I'm gonna try this motherboard install again. The MFM cables are a little bound up. It's like completely down. There's like no way I can get my hand down in there. And here we go again with the old pry.
Well, I'm certainly getting better at this as I do it. There, the motherboard's back in again. Okay, now I'm gonna try to connect the power cable to the hard drive. Does not help with the camera in the way. Okay. Okay, I think I should have put the power cable on the other side, so I'm gonna move that. All right, there we go. This is just ridiculous. If this thing breaks, I'm never opening this computer up again. It's just gonna be a doorstop. So there, the two MFM cables are, are on it. They're so squished against the power supplies, it seems such a dangerous situation. Okay, so this is the fan power cable. Put on some 3M sticky tape. So theoretically, this is ready for testing at this point. Let's turn it on, see what happens. It didn't work because the power cord I plugged in wasn't plugged into anything. For a second I thought, oh, I ruined it. Plugging this back in. Now we try, here we go. Hard drive spinning up. Yeah, we got a picture. Computer's not broken. Oh, it's booting. Awesome. Before I button this up, do I do want to adjust the CRT slightly. It's a little bit too wide. So use a plastic adjustment tool here because there's a width coil. You don't want to use something metal and you put that in there and you turn it and then I can shrink the picture a little bit. So now it's a little bit too shifted over that way. So it's shrunk, but there's no way to move it left and right with at least these adjustments on the side. So we have to adjust the centering. It's these rings here. So there's one there and there's one there. And you do have to do this while it's on. So be careful. See, as I move them, it's moving the picture around. Yeah, that looks about good now. Seems like there's a kind of an even border all around. So you just sort of turn those two adjustments till the picture is in a position that you're happy with. All right, I'm gonna put this little RF shield on. That's strangely only half size. A friend of mine who has a Mac 512, he said that his had one that was a very similar size to this. And now we put the back cover on. All I have to worry about is connecting this funky fan connector. So I gotta like have to halfway put this on. There we go. And now it's done. The Mac 512K with the hyperdrive 10 megabyte hard drive is reinstalled and fully operational. So really the question now is how long is this 10 meg hard drive gonna last for? I guess we'll find out because I don't plan on getting rid of this computer anytime soon. Well, there you have it. That's it for this Mac 512K for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, you know what to do, stick them in the comment section below. If you did like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you didn't, you know what to do, give me a thumbs down. Subscribe for more videos, and thanks for watching. Bye. Nice.